You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Happy Monday. Yes. Hope everyone had a wonderful, safe 4th of July. Speaking of 4th of July, so we're recording this before 4th of July. My husband came home the other day and he's like, I bought Carson fireworks. And I was like, he's fucking three years old. Oh what kind of gosh. fireworks did you buy him? Well, you bought him were those little snaps things that you throw on the ground and they just pop yeah. like the little white things. But now they're all over our patio because Carson like loved them. And so they went through like two boxes worth the other day because Carson just kept throwing them on the ground. And then he bought sparklers. And I was like, I don't trust Carson with sparklers. No, no he's that's, too little. That's too little. I feel like you need to be like six or seven for yeah. sparklers. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. I just, fireworks are not my favorite thing in general. Yeah. They um, definitely scare me a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Can I just say, and I think most of our listeners will appreciate this. Our neighbors sometimes put off fireworks at like 10, 11 o'clock at I night. I don't understand. Do you not have respect for the fact that other individuals have small children that are sleeping? And if you wake my child <laughs> up, I'm going to be very angry with you. Or my dog. Like, Jer- I will say Jersey is going deaf. We took him to the doctor. So, like, he hates fireworks. But I don't think he's fully deaf because he really didn't like the storm last night. Yeah. And was struggling. And then Carson was struggling. And I was home by myself with Carson and the dog. And I was just like... Of course this happened tonight. Yeah. Both of the Carson and the dog are both crying and screaming. And I'm just sitting there being like, I, I can't yell at Jersey because he can't hear me. And Carson <laughs> is upset because Jersey's crying, not because of the thunder. And this is what's <laughs> happening right now. And I'm super pregnant. And Carson's like climbing on me. Of course, the night that Nick, night that Nick is out of town. It's like the time that Art went out of town and we had that horrible, horrible snowstorm for two days. He mm. literally flew out the morning before it started <laughs> and flew back the morning after like it had all ended mm-hmm. and the streets were clear and we had to shut down the gym like my trainers oh, were having God. to come over and like try to like help get me out of the driveway i didn't have any winter boots either so i'm like driving this big truck i can't see anything across the street driving mall. In snow it, we need it was to move just out of Illinois. crazy i feel like they always pick like the perfect time but anyways we hope that you guys all had a fun weekend a safe weekend yes. and i'm excited for today so this is uh, a question that was in our fit mom group and it's from a girl named jamie she's been following us for a while and i think it's a really really good question that a lot of people have misconceptions around yeah um and so we want to just kind of like do a little case study on her and clear the air here um in terms of how to like recomp like recomp so what we say here is like reshape your body, right? Essentially. Yeah. What a lot, this is kind of boils down to, can we lose body fat and gain muscle at the same time? Mm-hmm. Which I think is the, a really tough thing based on research. And we're going to talk about the few instances that this does show that it can work. But I think what people think that they want, they don't actually want. What needs to happen is people need to eat enough for us to maintain muscle mm-hmm. while maybe losing a little bit of body fat, which yep. is hard. Like that's for most people, it's probably going to be eating at maintenance. And we're going to kind of dive into this and like the specifics around this. We're using the case study as like an example that I think a lot of people will probably be able to relate to. Um, And then we're going to dive into more of like, okay, how does this work within the body? Is it possible to lose fat and gain muscle? What happens when you diet to muscle like that kind of thing? And I think how to basically accomplish the body composition that I think a lot of people want that they think that they have to lose body fat and gain muscle to get. Yeah. And the second part of her question here is how much cardio should you be doing when you are trying to build muscle? Um, So definitely want to approach that as kind of like a separate question um, because there's a time and a place for cardio. But again, when we are looking to build muscle, um, strength is going to be king there. So Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of background on Jamie. So she is 41 years old. She's five foot four. Weighs weight right now is 133 to 135. Um, she's currently eating 1450 to 1500 calories after listening to the Food Code podcast and pulling herself out of this 1200 calorie 
place for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, And her exercise routine currently is four to five days a week using anywhere between 10 and 30 pound dumbbells. She also does a few um, short high intensity interval training sessions. She says here around like 10 minutes or so. uh, And then she will do 30 minute treadmill intervals. But she mentions that when she does these intervals, she feels kind of puffy and swollen the next day. Definitely some things that can come to play there. Uh, And then she also talks a little bit about, you know, her current intake of overall calories and where that's coming from. So wanted to bring this up because, you know, as we kind of dive further into this case study, these are things that I would change a little bit for her goals. So she's doing 130 grams of protein. She's pretty close to that gram um, per pound of protein intake, which is not bad by any means. Um, 115 grams of carbs and 55 grams of fat. She's doing this from one ingredient, Whole Foods. And she says that it's taken her about two months to work up to this place because she was eating 1,200 calories and doing intense exercise for so long. So... Before we kind of uh, go further into this, one of the things that she mentions is she thinks that the 1450, 1500 is only about 100 calories off of her maintenance. And so this is probably going to be kind of eye opening uh, for her because we estimate your maintenance is a lot higher than that. Um, Not probably right now because you've been dieting for so long and you've been, you know, training this way and eating this way for years that you're probably adapted. You know, we've talked a lot about metabolic adaptation and how the body tries to, you know, to close that gap. And, you know, therefore we're going to see some down regulation in different um, body systems, as well as your metabolism when we're doing this for so long. So maintenance, we estimate somewhere between 1800, 1900. I'm honestly going to say if you are doing, you know, the interval training, you're doing the high intensity training, you're lifting four to five days a week, and you're, you know, being intentional with walks and non-stressful movement. This is, probably even a little bit higher for you. We don't really know, right? Because we don't have all the answers to the questions that we would normally ask our clients. And we don't have an evaluation here of kind of like your food log and how long you've been in this deficit. Because there's definitely, as we say, there's two kind of things that we look at. The length of the deficit and the duration or sorry the duration of the deficit and then the intensity of the deficit. Mm -hmm. You know, so how long you've been there and how low you've been. So if you're, you know, let's say 800 to 900 calories in a deficit, maybe a little bit less than that, this is a pretty large deficit. And so it's going to take time to reverse the impact of that. Yeah, absolutely. So we know a little bit about her. She said her sleep is good, which is good. But she also mentioned that like doing these cardio intervals on the treadmill, she feels puffy and swollen the next day. And so to me, all biofeedback isn't bad. Like if you're sleeping okay, that's pretty good. She obviously isn't extremely overweight. So I have a feeling like the body in general is relatively healthy, but she does feel puffy after doing like cardio based, longer cardio based stuff. And so to me, that shows a little bit of adrenal issues. um, Because most often when people tolerate, like usually if people have like some level of adrenal stress, most people do you guys, let's be honest. But if you've been under eating and like kind of training quite a bit, which she has for a while, adrenal stress often shows up more when we do too much. So like weight training is great. um, And in right dosing can be very possible for people that are recovering from adrenal issues. Um, High intensity, usually if it's short enough, doesn't like throw the body off. It's these longer, you know, intervals, longer training sessions that are really like beating us down um, that can cause this adrenal issue. And so that's probably why she experiences it really only with these cardio intervals. Um, But her goal is body composition. You know, she wants to basically build muscle and lose body fat or look more toned and lose body fat. And so we need to kind of clear the air here with this concept because I think there's there's a lot of different arguments on this. Um, And we're going to go to the research because here's the idea. Like it we have to look at logical like yeah it seems logical that if i start strength training a a lot more and i'm eating right i should be able to build strength and lose body fat like we get that there is some logic to that but what the research shows is there's really only three instances that this can happen okay so the first one is if you are totally new to resistance training you might be like somewhat trained in terms of you've cardio before done running stuff like that but like if you're new to resistance training and following a high protein diet this is probably the largest population that we'll see this happen with because the training response for someone that is so that is new to training is so powerful like you are literally 
going to repartition how calories are used in your body because I tell I talk about new training as like a dry sponge getting water. You are going to soak up all of that new stimulus to the body and the calories you're eating are basically going to build that muscle and the calories that you're liberating from dieting are going to be used towards and basically spared towards muscle building. And so this is a small population, obviously. The next one is if you're very, very overweight, okay? If you are, you know, 30 plus, 40 plus percent body fat, um, the reason being is because the signaling within the body doesn't work the same when we are high body fat percentage, okay? This is why people that are 300 plus pounds are going to lose weight a lot faster and a lot easier because of how the body is not seeing it as much of a threat as if you are in somewhat close to like your body weight set point already. So like if you are, you know, a relatively healthy individual, you have some muscle tone on you, you are active, stuff like that, you just are not going to have the same signaling within the body. The body's going to see it as a lot more of a threat when you try to calorie cut and lose body fat as it does to someone that has a lot of body fat to spare. Okay. It's just not, the body doesn't work the same. And then the last example, steroids. Basically, steroids kind of override the body's <laughs> normal functions, as I'm sure most of us would know. Um, so like, and obviously, any illicit anabolic or anabolic steroids are going to allow you to accomplish things that the body would not normally allow for itself. And so, you know, some days I'm like, why don't I just take steroids? <laughs> you know, why don't I just, it seems a lot easier. I mean, yeah. you still have to put in work, but gosh, does it do some of the work for you? <laughs> So this is kind of, as we were, you know, you were talking there, really reminded me of a client of mine named Kelly. Um, She started at our gym, actually. She had been doing Orange Theory Fitness um, and, you know, just like cardio-based stuff for a long, long time. And she's like, I want to get into more strength building. She also had the same goals here of recompositioning uh, her body, gaining strength, losing fat. And so we talked a lot in the beginning about, you know, her nutrition and how much she was eating. Very similar scenario. She's a little bit higher, like 13, 1400, but she also has a very active job. Yeah. Um, and, you know, coming out of those stressful workouts that she was doing with all of the intervals and kind of higher intensity and then some longer runs on top of Orange Theory, I'm like, we've got to kind of completely revamp everything here. Mm-hmm. So for her, she didn't see weight on the scale move, but when we're looking at, you know, her pictures, her measurements and her body fat percentage just with the scans that we use in the gym, she was down 3%, but that is again going back to what you mentioned is like she was brand new to resistance mm-hmm. training, right? Yeah. Um, and is definitely not strength training, I would say, no. unless you no, and we actually have a client that does F45 and she's like I grab the heaviest dumbbells I can and everyone else is using like 10 or 15 pound dumbbells. Mm -hmm. And so that's something else that I think we'll, we'll talk about. But yeah. So, you know, that's, that's kind of one of those off like rare scenarios, but you know, for you um, speaking to like Jamie right now, If you can get yourself into a space where you can actually lift heavy in order Mm -hmm. to build muscle, we've got to create different stimuluses and 30 pound dumbbells. Yeah, you can do a lot with that, but you can only go so far. Mm -hmm. And so when I say lift heavy, you've probably seen, you know, some of the videos and other podcasts that we talk about, like barbell work, um, not being afraid of really trying to push your weights in a safe way with proper form, of course, Mm -hmm. Um, but getting under load. That's the only way that you're going to actually create the stimulus that's necessary to build muscle. And then what I wanted to add in here too is carbohydrates for you way too low. I think 115 grams, um, one one gram per pound of body weight. That's just, it's way too low. Yeah. So, and fats aren't high. And so like there's basically, you are not giving your body adequate energy to use towards muscle building. You guys, muscle building is an expensive task for the body. Like Mm -hmm. when we diet, certain research shows you lose up to 30% lean body tissue up to 30% of your lean body tissue, your body burns through when we are in a calorie deficit for prolonged periods of time, because it is much easier to spare muscle than it is to spare body fat. And in turn, it's much harder to build muscle than it is to build body fat, which is why it has to be done so precisely. Mm -hmm. And this is why for someone like her, that is a trained individual, I think until she gets into like a higher capability of true resistance, like heavy resistance training for people that are in those places we need to either come up to maintenance, but what research shows is like you, you need to be in a caloric surplus to build muscle mass and Mm -hmm. believe it or not, you're going to probably build some body fat with it. And then you just have to cut like there is, that is why the cycling and this periodization exists. I've done this. I mean, and yes, 
Believe me, gaining body fat when trying to build muscle is effing hard. But what it turns into is a completely different body composition. We cannot just diet our way down and exercise our way to a lean, muscular body. It's it's impossible. It is literally impossible, which is why people chase it forever, never accomplishing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so outside of periodization, this is also where we talk about like the triangle of awareness too, right? So when we work with our clients, we're either working on aesthetics, which means, (laughs) you know, we're in a fat loss phase, Um, but... In other places, we're looking at longevity or in this scenario, we would be looking at like performance. Okay. And so for you, you may have to go through kind of a massing phase and there you're working on performance, right? You're working on building muscle. You're working on increasing your strength in the gym. And then we shift over to the other piece of the puzzle after you've gone through that massing phase and that's the fat loss phase, but we have to eat enough Again, I agree with Becca here and the research tells us no one can argue this. You need to be eating in a caloric surplus in order to have enough fuel to build muscle. Like there's only two things that you do that build your body up. Number one is sleep and rest, right? And the second thing is eat and nourish your body. So kind of going back to, you know, some of the things that we would have you do. Um, number one is bring calories as close to maintenance as possible. So right now you're at 1450, 1500, right? We estimate somewhere closer to 18, 1900. So inch your way there, you know, maybe do like a 10% increase, sit there for a couple of weeks. Yes. You can of course monitor the scale. You can monitor pictures. You can monitor, you know, body composition measurements. I like having photos and body composition measurements outside of just the scale, because Mm -hmm. one, if you're going to increase your carbs, you're likely going to see a little uptick from water weight, not from fat, just from water weight, because for every one gram of glucose that's stored in the body, you have about three to four grams of water that's get stored. Okay. So get up to, you know, the 16, 1650, sit there for a few weeks and then again, take that next bump closer to that 1800. And I know she mentioned she's had a really hard time getting to that place. So let's talk outside of just the carbs that I already mentioned that I would increase for you. I think your protein is good. You could hold steady there. 125, 130 is fine, but healthy fats is going to be a real easy way for you to get in extra calories. So we say at minimum, no less than like 50 grams for Mm -hmm. hormonal support for women. You're at 55 grams right now. A really easy ad that you could do this week is put some chia seeds into your eggs. You could add avocado oil or olive oil dressing to a salad instead of like all the light dressings or just balsamic. You know, I'm not sure what that looks like for you. Um, Nuts, seeds, you know, all of those healthy omega threes that we want. Um, those are very easy ways. Cook with butter. We love Kerrygold butter, right? Mm-hmm. That is an instant extra hundred calories. If you just did one of those things, um, and it's not going to be an ex- a lot of extra volume. Another very easy thing to do is look at where your protein sources are coming from. Are we doing a lot of protein shakes and lean protein? Well, let's switch over to a little bit more red meat. Again, we don't know a lot about you and you know your style of eating. Some people are vegan, vegetarian, so forth. Uh, but I would go more red meat. That's That's another real easy way to increase calories. If you're having trouble in terms of like hunger cues, that's also kind of a sign that you've adapted. If your hunger is not, you know, present and you never feel hungry, um, I would recommend starting, you know, eating a little bit more frequently, maybe some smaller meals, keeping your snacks 200, maybe, you know, 250 uh, at a minimum calories. Absolutely. And I think at the end of the day, what we need to realize is if you have truly been eating 1200 calories for years and you've just recently increased, you have to understand that your body is probably pretty undernourished. Like your body is struggling with nutrient deficiencies. It's struggling with vitamin deficiencies. It is not going to build muscle without those things being adequate. It's just not like you guys, I, and and this is not being like mean to anyone. I almost get upset sometimes when people look at building muscle as like, well, how, how do I do it without like, you know, lo- gaining body fat or how do I do it? You know, just to, how can I make it happen in the next few months? You guys, I trained and competed for four plus years and gaining muscle is freaking hard for 99% of people. Sure. There are some people that like, yes, they are just, usually those people are really amazing athletes and people that excel in things like that. But gaining muscle, Muscle is a lifelong project. It is not something that happens in a matter of three to four months. It is something that when we talk to our clients about, I'm like, you need to be mentally committed to this process for at least the next six to 12 months in terms of how you're going to periodize it and process it. Mm -hmm. And so for someone like this that is coming from an underfed place, I would say you probably need to take the next two months, bump up to, you know, this 16, 1700 calories if we're only at 1450, 1500 
continue to focus on strength training, maybe not doing as much cardio and doing a little bit more walking if you want to continue to add movement in for some people that mentally helps. Mm -hmm. And then taking another two months, increase again to 18, 1900, 2000, maybe even. Because just because we are maintaining our weight at 1500 calories does not mean that it's our maintenance place. That is such an important piece to understand. So many people live their lives thinking, how could I possibly eat more if I'm not losing weight eating this? Because our maintenance is usually way higher than we think it is. And so it's scary to eat more and we get that. But building muscle needs to be something that you are basically on a mission to for the rest of your life. Like it's not, yeah, you can go through strength phases and change up training, but it's not a short term game. Like you have to be in this for the long haul. You have to understand that when you do strength cycles, when you do these things, it's a very intentional thing. And most often when you go through strength cycles, body composition is not the main goal. Like it's building strength, which in turn can lead to body composition, which is usually the next phase of like the fat loss phase after the building phase. But there's a reason these phases exist, guys. The people that don't need these phases are anomalies. They are people that just, their bodies are fast responders. They tend to have a lot of like really good health situations going on. They don't have a lot of issues. They don't have a lot of gut issues, adrenal issues, stuff like that. So we need to be realistic with our goals. And it sucks that social media and you know society in general makes it seem like these things are easy to accomplish with the effing Instagram models that are like, do this body weight workout at home and look like me. Like, no, bitch, you lift in a gym with a barbell just like like everyone else that lifts weights and builds muscle. So don't tell people and lie to people that doing their body weight at home workout is going to build muscle. We we need to be realistic with goals here. I'm sorry I get fiery. I just That's the way I that they sell their dumbbell building. program. I struggle with building muscle. And you know, I know Liz is working really hard right now for her powerlifting meet. Like you guys, building muscle is no easy task, especially for females. We don't have testosterone flowing through the veins mm-hmm. as much as males do. So like, we need to understand that this is a project. And yeah. usually that project includes eating more than you think you need to eat. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking about like, you know, last week when I started tracking my blood um, sugar levels and I realized like just naturally I'm like 100 grams of carbs. If I'm not intentional about it, I'm like, shit, that's probably why I didn't hit my numbers that I wanted last week because I need <laughs> I need more carbs. Right. Um, and so I'll do that in certain you know ways. If you feel too Jamie, that like you're just really sensitive or intolerant to like gluten and things like that, which you know that I am because you listen to our podcast uh, religiously. I have a protein, um, or sorry, a carbohydrate supplement that I pair with my protein powder after my workout. It's called clean carbs. It's gluten-free. It's made from sweet potatoes, yams, and oatmeal. I like that. That's an easy way for me to get about 25 grams of carbohydrates in post-workout. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to mention here is, you know, Becca was talking a little bit about, you know, you're going to bump and you're going to stay there for a little bit and you're going to bump and you're going to stay there. Um, one of the things that, you know, we do, and you, you probably know this from listening to the podcast is we help people through reverse dieting. Like we've built metabolic prehab. We've built a lot of our programs um, around some of this because we get that it's hard mentally. Like you want to understand like how can I kind of offset, you know, whether it's like puffiness or other things that you're feeling and talk through, you know, the reasons why you, you know, might be feeling certain ways when you're going through that phase. Um, But most importantly, it's, it's that mental piece, right? But if you can wrap your head around the fact that your body needs nourishment and in this phase, this is your one and only task to eat, to build muscle. Um, I think that will help you a ton. And then two, you might see, which has happened for eight out of 10 of our clients, I would say 80% of our clients that we go through reverse dieting with, you might see a little bit of weight loss because Mm -hmm. you're reducing the stress that you've put on your body from this deficit for such a long period of time. And so, you know, as we talk about reverse dieting and increasing, we always talk about, you know, where that food is coming from. Like this isn't the ticket to say, okay, I've got an extra 200 calories a day. Well, let me, you know, have a candy bar or ice cream or wine or whatever. We still want it to be from one ingredient, whole foods. I have no concern around that for you because you do that and you eat very, very clean now. Um, But we always just have to remember too, like the scale isn't everything. And so if you go through this gaining phase and then you start to go through like a cutting phase, you might gain a little bit of weight initially, but then when you drop that, you're going to notice like, okay, I have more muscle. And so three pounds, you know, in a fat loss phase doesn't seem like much. Like if you weighed 130, you know, starting out, okay, 130, 133, those are kind of like the same things. But when you have three pounds of muscle that you've put on through your massing phase which 
that's probably hard for most people to do depending upon yeah, how long your massing phase three pounds of muscle it takes a lot of work and a lot of time yes but that's a totally different you know body composition and you can mm-hmm. google out there right 155 pound woman that you know has it's like 30 percent body fat right. versus 155 pound woman that's 20 percent body fat. totally like, different totally different guys and this is to be honest and i know liz is the same way if you've been training for a while and like you've been eating relatively well for a while it's you're hard. probably going to not see a ton of change in a short period of time. I have to use pictures because otherwise I get discouraged. My weight really does not shift anymore. Like maybe plus minus five pounds, if that. Um, but what truly shifts for me is how I hold my weight. I look different. My, you know, I look leaner. I look fitter. I look tighter because we all know muscle is more dense. It takes up less space on the body. And so getting rid of the scale here, I think is huge for a lot of people and really focusing on measurements focusing on pictures and then focusing on how much you can lift like Mm -hmm. let's be honest if you're lifting more you're probably getting stronger and building muscle mass or you are getting better at recruiting the right muscles which is in turn going to lead to more muscle mass and you know a different body composition so at the end of the day very few populations can gain muscle and lose weight and lose body fat at the same time but i think at the end of the day what people really want is to just look in that way. It doesn't necessarily have to happen that way to look that way. And so it's, you know, eating enough, pushing your body in the gym and getting on, you know, the lifetime excursion of getting strong. Yeah. And then the last thing I think here is, you know, focus on recovery too. Yeah. Um, I know part of that question was cardio. We already touched on that. I don't think you need to be doing a lot of extra cardio, especially if you're seeing that inflammatory response from those intervals. I would pull back on that. I think the hit stuff's fine yeah. a few days a week. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I usually, especially as we age as women, I think hits important. Explosive mm-hmm. movements are important for not developing osteoporosis through menopause and like all the different things that can happen with muscle mat loss and bone loss. Um, we need to load the bones just like we load the muscles and jumping mm-hmm. explosiveness, stuff like that's really important. So yeah. and I if like you're gonna, hit. If you're going to do the hit, um, I like what you're doing like 10, 15 minutes. That's totally fine. I yep. would do that before your strength sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that will pull a little bit more blood flow into the muscles as well. So we've seen a lot of, you know, benefit from that with some of our ladies kind of switching that around. Again, this is going to be dependent, you know, on how you feel. If you start to notice that it's impacting your strength, then maybe you flip flop it again. But, yeah. you know, I think that could be definitely beneficial. And then the, the last thing I keep saying the last thing, two things. One is recovery, like focus on your recovery. I think if you are going into a strength building phase, you need to have adequate rest. And so Mm -hmm. for me, what that looks like right now is I'm training four days a week. Most days outside of that, I'm doing some sort of just, you know, non-stressful movement. Sometimes I'll do a ROM wad. Sometimes I just make sure that I go for a little bit longer of a walk and hit a little higher step count. So for me, that could be 12,000, 15,000 steps kind of just depends. Um, Focus a lot on sleep. Sounds like your sleep is pretty sound. So that's good. But just other recovery modalities as you start to get under heavier load is going to be really important. Um, And then I forgot the other thing that I was going to say as part two of that. So that's great. You just talked about, you talked about recovery. I know. That was your part one. There was one other thing I was going to tell her and I forgot. So sorry, Jamie, if I think of it, I'll message you. (laughs) (laughs) I was like right there. I didn't make any notes around it, but I I think, oh, I remember. Sorry. Okay. The second piece that I was going to add on to that, you need to be following a strength training program. Yeah, absolutely. Like you need to have a progressive program. It needs to be heavy. It needs to be, you know, something that you are going to build up over the course of 12 to 16 weeks. And you just got to be consistent with that. I don't have concerns around consistency for you. Uh, but I do want to make sure that you are following something that is good in terms of helping you build that muscle. So I will say um, there's a couple programs out there that we like. Mm -hmm. We do like MAPS. We like MAPS Strong. Um, That's a really good one. I know Becca's used some other ones as well. I've used Paragon before. Um, To be totally honest, I probably will hire a coach again after the baby. Um, I need something individualized because I tend to cherry pick my workouts and not do movements (laughs) that I'm not good at. And so to get back to a place physically fitness wise that I'd really like to be at, I'll probably hire a coach. Yeah. I think, you know, there's a lot to be said about individualization of programming. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you've never really done a ton of barbell work, I think any of the maps, aesthetic maps, strong programs are going to be really beneficial. Yeah. And if you are looking for a strength coach, I have one from barbell logic. I work with Nikki Sims from barbell logic. She's fantastic. Um, her roster is full. You won't be able to get in with her, but they have a lot of other coaches at barbell logic too. So again, 
look into some of those things so that you have that accountability. Nice thing too, depending upon how, like which route you go is with Barbell Logic, I submit videos um, every workout. And so she critiques and she makes, you know, form adjustments and things like that. And then adjust my programming based upon like how I'm feeling. And they do more than just powerlifting too. So that was the other thing that I forgot that I was going to say, but I think it's really, really um, critical for anyone who wants to be in a massing phase or building uh, muscle you need to have a good program that's mm-hmm. progressive. So, okay, with that, happy Monday. We hope you guys had a great weekend and enjoyed the holiday. And we'll be back on Wednesday with our podcast on birth control and an interview with Dr. Haley Shaw. Yep. Have a great day. Thank you all so much for being here. If you've enjoyed this podcast, the best thing that you could do for us as a gift to us would be to take a screenshot and share it on Instagram, tag us, share it on Facebook, whatever platform that you listen, or just tell a friend, invite a friend to listen to this podcast. Um, The more that you can kind of share with word of mouth, the more people that we can touch throughout the world. Five-star reading and review on iTunes as this helps us grow and reach others. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you.